everybody it's dr rick dropping in on you i hope that everything is going the way you want it to go um if not continue to put the work in if you're still breathing you are definitely still in the fight now look i want to talk to you today about the importance of a an individual and a collective identity and why the black collective is in a uh, an identity crisis and how that identity crisis negatively impacts a bunch of the efforts, desires, and possibilities for us in the way of liberation, empowerment, financial wealth, um, and just outright health uh, in the United States in particular. Um, you know the routine. If you like what you hear, you like what you see, uh, click the like button, click the share button, give. If you believe in the work that we have done, uh, primarily through my research, program development, program implementation, work in the community in areas of education, uh, domestic violence, uh, African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, and so much more. Look in the description box and give. The way that we continue forward is that we've got to resource the people who are willing to actually get out there and put in the work. It's time out for guessing games. It's time out for lecture series. It's time out for all the things that look cute and have a sense of promise on the surface but have no active, op active operational value. We are in last place so socioeconomically. We are in last place in weight of political influence. We're in last place as far as uh, what we're able to do on a grand scheme in any way, shape, form, or fashion. We are purposely now being replaced as a voting bloc in this country by the very people we have been immensely loyal to over the last 60 years. And we are easily falling for the uh, hoopla and the uh, sleight of hand because we, number one, don't know who we are. Number two, don't know what we possess. Number three, don't understand how the game is played. I've been saying this for years, that because we don't understand how the game is played, uh, we will continue to lose. When you don't know how things work, people who do tend to take advantage of you. It's real simple. Uh, you have to learn the way the game is played. You have to learn uh, what the up, uh, ultimate objective of the people around you are. Who identifies with you? Who identifies you as an enemy? Who sees you as an ally? Who sees you as someone to use as a pawn? Who sees you as simply a means to an end? And you have to act accordingly. There's no room for emotion. There's no room for sentimental uh, uh, ideology. It is who can I trust? Who can I work with? Who has the same agenda as I do? Who has the same enemy as I do? These are the things that you have to look at. You have to develop financial uh, literacy, an understanding of economic science. You have to develop an understanding of military science because in military science, it's not just about numbers. It's about the allies that you can create. Uh, the allies that you can create at any given time. So again, this is immensely important when you are talking about this, I've been writing about an identity crisis for roughly close to 30 years. Um, I had a very strong uh, background in understanding this all the way back to my reading of the work from Franz Fanon uh, in Wretched of the Earth and Black Skin, White Mask uh, to Breaking the Psychological Chains of Slavery by Dr. Naeem Agbar and the conglomerate of work by Dr. Amos Wilson. I was literally ushered into the field of psychology and human behavioral science by Dr. Francis Grace Wilson. And I have spent my life building on the work that they presented and left to us. And well, Dr. Not I I Akbar is still with us. Look, one of the ways that you subjugate a people is you rob them of their values, their interests, and their principles. And you do this in subtle ways, but you do it, if necessarily, forcefully. Uh, when you remove their right to serve and practice their own spiritual practices, and you interpolate your own spiritual practices with a super interpolation of an image of a deity 
or supreme being that looks like you and not like them in a distinct way that they understand that this God comes from you and represents you and you are simply executing the power that that God gave you over them. This is the power of misinterpreted, misapplied religion. This isn't the argument. This is neither the place nor the time to have the argument about where Christianity originated. We're talking about how it was used in Western culture. And that's where we have to be honest. We can talk about conquest. We can talk about a bunch of other things uh, that no one wants to talk about at another time. But what we're talking about now is how it was used here. We know for a fact that uh, Christianity was used during the days of slavery as a means of control in a number of different ways. Uh, no matter where you're from, no, no matter where you're, there is a form of spirituality that's practiced. There may be plural deities, there may be a mono deity, uh, there may be an op. Uh, uh, omni deity meaning that this one deity is everything all things and from this one deity all things come uh, many religions in the western culture come from this and whatever it is no matter where do you go if you travel around the world one of the things you start to realize is that wherever I go their version of this deity looks like them and in America being that it was founded are it was colonized, hot, depending on how you want to define it, uh, uh, by Europeans. We have a European version of a mono deity, uh, simply so well, uh, people are so well aware of, we simply call this deity God. Now, God actually, if we search these religions in which this mon mono deity exists, has multiple names and is referred to in multiple ways, has both feminine and masculine energy, and represents the totality and holism of the universe as a whole. Matter of fact, this God is the uh, manifestation of an idea of what's represented in the entire universe because the entire universe exists of this God. Now, we can get off into all of that and a bunch of people get upset because everybody's been trained through this religion of what they can do, what they can think, what they can be. And that is absolutely opposite of what the divine power, the source God intended. He intended for, or God intended for mankind to be a representation here on earth of God's presence. To be able to call things that are not as though they were to be able to speak and in that speaking and in that declaration make things be so to be able to use your thinking to move matter which we now know we have the possibility to do and we are actually doing every day but in most instances doing it in the wrong way because we are taught to think in the negative we are taught to think in the area in the way of lack and scarcity we are taught to think about who is oppressing us versus how we overcome oppression and these very simple uh new nuances in the way we think literally anchors us in our reality. We can go on and on about that, but just the sense of identity, being robbed of your values, your interests and your principles, your history, your, your, your native idea of who you are is immensely powerful in subjugation. You don't subjugate a people through physical change and physical bondage because the moment in the, in any inkling they have, uh, that there's a chance to boat, they jump and ship and they run and you're going to have to catch them and bring them back. And, and you can do that over and over again. And if you never break it, they will consistently run. There's a movie and some question the validity of it. It's supposed to be an autobiography written by Alex Haley that uh, many uh, uh, believe was an embellishment. But in this movie, there's this guy who was captured overseas. Name is Kunta Kente. Kunta Kente came and they could not break him. Uh, he eventually they got him to accept and respond to the name Toby, uh, but he still believed he was of royalty from Africa. And he would run no matter what. He was one of those that would boat. And um, eventually they cut his foot, half his foot off, half of one of his feet off, uh, so that he couldn't run. And that was the only way he couldn't run because now he physically could not run. And it was the connection to what he held inside of him. They could never get it out of him, but most would not run. 
As a matter of fact, many, if they found out you were running, would tell. Why? Because I no longer identify with what you identify with. I identify with the system that oppresses me. I have even began to believe that the system that oppresses me has my best interests at heart. Why? Because I now hold the interests of the system. That's what Malcolm was talking about when he was talking about boss we sick. To the point that we're identifying we sick. No, he's sick. And actually afraid that he may die. And I see it consistently in the way that we behave when we see the system that we have consistently said over time is oppressing us, starts to fall apart, stops looking the way that it always has looked. We get upset. Somebody exposes something in the system, we attack them. Somebody doesn't behave the way we think people in a certain office or a certain place should behave. Despite the fact that nobody in that office has ever did a jack thing for us, we are going to go against it because we've been taught, we've been conditioned, we've been programmed that this is what you're supposed to behave like. And we will literally move that. And, and, and uh, when I was interviewed by Dr. Michael Blanchard, man, 10, 12 years ago now, uh, he asked me, why is it that we have so many gifted people? Why is it that's, uh, that there's so much knowledge out there and yet black people remain immobile? And black, I said, facts mean absolutely nothing to the conditioned mind. Uh, he actually placed that quotes, uh, he, he, he actually placed that quote among others of mine and many others uh, that I talk about, I mentioned that I hold in high regard in his book, Black, uh, The Black Limitations. Um, but yeah, facts mean nothing to the, absolutely nothing to the condition and program of mind. If I can get you to believe something through uh, the immersive uh, conditioning of propaganda, if I can get you to learn and believe something through learned helplessness, what is learned helplessness? If you sit up and you try something over and over again, or you believe, convince yourself that you're trying something over and over and over and over again, uh, eventually you get what's called learned helplessness. That's just a simple point in which you start to believe that it can't possibly happen because I've already tried it. Then there's vicarious learned helplessness, which is just watching other people try and seeing them fail and just realizing, why should I even try? Nobody's ever been able to do it. And all of these different mechanisms, propaganda being the most powerful, they teach us to simply take what they give us. And because we don't have our own values and interests and principles, we don't have a sense of identity. I, I actually got into a heated uh, discussion. I won't call it a debate because like Dr. Clark says, I can only debate my equals. Uh, but but a, a guy from Jamaica who was determined to tell me that all I was was an American. I had no attachment to Africa. And genetically, there's a possibility I may may or may not, but I identify with my people. Um, you know, despite what my genetics may say, I identify with my people. I identify with what I've lived. I identify with what people see when they see me because that's what I see. And that's all that matters to me because that's the reality I'm going to live. Nobody's doing DNA tests when I walk out to determine whether they're going to shoot me at the sight of any form of aggression or sign of aggression. But anyway, this guy was telling me all blacks that descend from slavery are simply American. They've been here that long that they have no connection to Africa because they've been diluted genetically so much and culturally so much that there's nothing they can relate to in Africa. But the problem is everybody else that lives here, including him, has something they can relate to before they got here, before their grandparents got here, before their great grandparents. Uh, people from Ireland know what part of Ireland they're from. They know family members that lived and died in Ireland, people from Jamaica, people from Sweden, all these different places that people are from, they have this connection. We don't. That's an identity crisis. That's a searching for something. So our anchor, because we don't have a clue of where we come before slave, where we came from before slavery, if we haven't taken the time to actually do genetic testing, and then there's so much that goes along with doing that genetic testing, you got to be willing to take those risks as well. But what happens is that because we don't have that, our anchor is subjugation. Our anchor, our oldest connection to anything here is slavery. You know, now there's all this information about now the Nile civilization, uh, the civilization of Kush, which led to the civilization of Kemet and on and, 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 and other 
uh, tribes and other uh, sectors of Africa that had real rich history. Uh, Mansa Musa and all of these different things that we learn about and now we want to discuss, but we still don't know what part of that we fit into. It, did, did I come from East, Northeastern Africa and maybe uh, a descendant of the Kushite or Kemetic uh, uh, empires and dynasties? Am I from somewhere in West Africa and a part of warrior tribes, uh, Bantu, uh, and and, and, and on, on down the line Where do I fit in? Because I don't know I can only dream, I can only hope I can search in my mind But there's something in the age of a young black male At the age of 13 to 15 Where they are yearning for that sense of identity and purpose Because it gives them so much insight Into what they're supposed to become If I don't know where I'm coming from It's hard to really truly gain an idea Where I'm supposed to go Because I don't know where I'm supposed to be Look, I could go on and on about this But we have some work to do and it's time out. We need to have research done. We need to sit down. I'm excited about this conference I'm doing for the Sunrise Project for Black Men on next Thursday where we're going to sit down and have a safe place where we are finally going to allow black men to decompress and talk about things that we uh, otherwise are uncomfortable talking about. And on that note, look, I'm excited. So look in the description box for that. Uh, stay tuned, but I'm gonna keep it coming. As I said in the past, if, uh, before we got started, if you like it, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. If you believe in the work, if you believe in the message, if you believe it needs to be bigger, it needs to be stronger, we need to do more work. I need you to look in the description box. I need you to make a sacrifice and give. I've been giving for over 30 years and I will continue to march out my orders of what, what I'm supposed to be here doing, but I'm asking for your support in the process. On that note, look, I'm going to get off, get in here with these guys, fire up a stick, and maybe have a couple of meaningful conversation. Uh, on that note, you guys take care. I'm out.